Hello, so the causes of hyponatremia are many, and one of them are medications, tiazide diuretics. Tiazide diuretics, not loop diuretics, because there exist diuretics of tiazide type and loop diuretics, for example. And it has been shown that the tiazide diuretics are, is causing hyponatremia. Hyponatremia. Why do we give tiazide diuretics? Tiazide diuretics are medications that will then increase the water excretion from the body, which means that, for example, you have a patient with heart failure and you need to get, you need to remove a lot of water because the water builds up in his lungs and we need to remove it. Or the patient has some edema in his legs, so a very uh, big, big swelling of water in his legs and we need to remove this water. And therefore the doctor now will give a tiazide diuretic, for example. And when you, when you give a TSI directly, in, in, in one week, in, for example, one week, two weeks, you will see that the patient will get hyponatremia. And usually this happens in the first one to three months of, of the cases. And usually it's only diagnosed after one year. So the patient comes in and I see the chart that he has a very low sodium level hyponatremia and then I need to find a cause and there are many many types of causes and then I need to make a quick anamnesis which means that I ask, ask the patient which medication do you take? Do you take any tiazide diuretics? Yes, okay, then let's stop this because this can cause hyponatremia and usually this is only de detected as I said in after one year because many patients does not have any symptoms and if they have symptoms, it's very general, like headache, malaise, vomiting, and so on. So it's very good if you go to the doctor and you measure sodium level regularly. You, you, and, the, and together with the symptoms, it means that you need to stop this TSI. You need to take some other medication. If you really need diuretic, then please try loop diuretics instead. Okay? And it has been shown that almost one-third of the patients taking tiazide diuretics can get hyponatremia. So it's, it's pretty common. And it has also been shown that it's very dangerous because hyponatremia can cause respiratory failure and death even. So there are some genetic predisposition of, there are some genes that can have a predisposition for this because not every patient with tiazide will get a hyponatremia. And therefore, it's important to, 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 uh, to remember that one third of the patients can get a hyponatremia and therefore we need to stop this. And what we also can do is to, uh, if you have very, very, a lot of symptoms and it's very severe, so the sodium level is very, very severe. Let's say it's less than 120 because the normal level should be around more than 135. And if it's, let's say, less than 120 and you have a lot of symptoms, then you need to add some uh, sodium. So isotonic, isotonic. And that just means, isotonic means that uh, it is not... It is a balance between the electrolytes. Iso means that it's in balance because you can give hypertonic, hypertonic uh, sodium. That means that we have a lot of sodium. So for example, 3% sodium, that's hypertonic and 0.9% that's isotonic. And these are the treatment options. So isotonic is the preferred one. The hypertonic is only given when it's very severe, very many, many neurologic symptoms like headache, vomiting, nausea, and so on. And the sodium level is, is less than 120. But if the patient does not have any symptoms, then please only give isotonic because what will happen? We stop this tiazide diuretic. That's the th first thing that we do. And when you stop it, usually the sodium level will, uh, will be normal again because this was the cause of the hyponatremia. And if it gets normal and you start to give a lot of sodium, so hypertonic sodium, then the sodium will build up too fast and you can call, cause something called osmotic, demulation, osmotic demulination, demulination. And that's very, very dangerous. Demulination. So you can kill the patient. If you, if you cause a too quick sodium increase. So this is 
this is uh, pretty much it, much it, I would say. And the only thing that you can remember is that in old age, when people are old, then the hyponatremia is much, much more common. And if the, if the body weight is less, most of the cases I always tell to reduce your body weight. But in this case, in hyponatremia, it's the opposite. But I, I'm, not refer I'm not saying that you should uh, increase your weight. I'm just saying that in lower, in, in, in lower amount of uh, fat and, and, and body weight, then you have an increased amount of hyponatremia. And the same goes with old age. It has been shown that if you increase the age with 10 years, you almost double the risk of getting hyponatremia. So, and especially so when we're talking about people who are elder, el elder than 60 years of age. And the same goes here with here. If you decrease the weight, then the risk is higher by almost one fourth. So we're almost 25% increase in the risk of hyponatremia. So that's it. You get the patient, you see that the sodium is low. What do you do? You try to, call, you try to search for the cause. One of the causes is TSI diuretics. You ask for the patient's medications. You see that in the chart that yes, he's taking TSIs. You, you stop that please. And you replace it with another medication. Then you wait. If he has real, and, and do, you don't give any other treatment. If he has symptoms and is very severe, then you give some sodium, isotonic sodium. Uh, or three percent if it's very very severe and very very severe symptoms but otherwise you wait this should be enough you should it should be enough to stop the TSI theoretics thank you very much for listening